Good day, Great Livings. Welcome to this wonderful Monday. I hope that you've had an awesome, awesome weekend and that you're right and ready for today and for actually since it's afternoon, I'm sure that you've survived Monday with flying colors and that you're ready to study a little bit of maths. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to carry on with factorization. I hope you remember that in the last lesson we were doing, we revised the basic grade 10 factorization, which was the sum and difference of two squares, sum and difference of two squares. What else did we revise? We revised some grouping. We did trinomials and we did common factors. So in this lesson, we're going to carry on with completing the square. Now the completing the square is traditionally hated by students because it's a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice it in the main, there are two main reasons why you need to learn to complete the square. The one is because you could be asked to complete the square. So they could ask you to solve it by completing the square. So they could ask you to solve a trinomial or quadratic by completing it. The second thing is that they, you need it in graphs to find the turning point of a parabola. Sometimes you they'll say to you, find it in this type of format. And when we do graphs, I'll explain it to you. And the only way you can do that is by completing the square. And the final thing about completing the square is that's how they get the quadratic formula. And they sometimes ask you to derive the quadratic formula. So that is one thing that we are going to have to show you how to do. So let's learn how to complete the square. So there are basic steps. This is a trinomial or quadratic equation. It's ax squared plus bx plus c. So the first step is we need to divide all the terms by a coefficient of x squared. This might seem a bit strange, but I actually left space for me to write here. So that's what we're going to do. We've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. We don't like any coefficient of x squared if it's not one. Okay, so we're going to divide all of it by a to get rid of the coefficient. So that cancels and we're left with x squared plus bx plus c over a equals naught, right? The next step is we're going to move the number term. Anything that does not have an x in it, and we're going to move it to the right side of the equation or just to the other side of the equal sign. So we're going to get x squared plus bx, okay? equals minus c over a, right? So we've got only x's on this side and we've got numbers on that side. Next, we're gonna complete the square on the left-hand side and balance this by adding the same value to the right-hand side. So how do we complete the square? Okay, what are we gonna do? It's gonna go x squared plus bx plus, and now what we need to do is we need to halve it and square it. We halve the middle term and then we square it. So we write plus b over 2 all squared. But I can't just do this to one side of the equation and not do it to the other side because then I don't have an equation anymore. So I've got to go minus c over a. And what do we do? We halve, well, we don't have to do anything more because we've already done it. So we just add. But to make it easier for ourselves, we're going to square this out. So this becomes b squared over 4. Okay, b squared over 4. So then what do we end up with? Now we need to smooth this out, okay? So we're going to take the square root of this term, which is x. We take whatever the first symbol or sign is and make that a plus. We take the square root of that term, which is b over 2, okay, squared. Because that's what we're doing. We're finding this because we've made this a perfect square. We're actually now just factorizing it into its initial brackets. Okay. Then is equal to. Now let's make this look pretty. So do you agree that that becomes a common denominator of four a? Okay. A goes into four a leaves with four, so it becomes minus four c plus 4 goes into this, so it leaves you an a, so it becomes a b squared. Okay, now what do we want? We now want to square root both of these, okay? So we go, okay, fine, we can do this. We're going to go x plus b over 2 
is equal to the square root of, and I'm going to rewrite this as AB squared, sorry, minus 4C all over 4A. Okay, minus, okay, and then finally, what we're going to do, sorry, I'm just a little confused. No, sorry, not by this, by what I got a message from about the broadcast, but it's fine. I thought I did. Anyway, so then it becomes x is equal to minus b over 2 square root of ab squared minus 4ac all over 4a. Okay, so that's our steps. And what we're going to do now is we're going to practice it. And we're going to practice on this one here, which is x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals minus 1, and we're asked to solve this using the completing the square. So we're going to be completing the square. And what's nice is that first off, the very first thing that's nice about this is that we have a coefficient of 1, so we do not need to divide anything. Secondly, they've been very nice and they've already put the number on this side. So all we have to do is complete the square on this side and then add it to that side. So this becomes x squared plus 4x, plus we need to halve this and square it. So it becomes 4 over 2 all squared, okay, is equal to minus 1, okay, plus whatever this is. What's 4 divided by 2? That is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Right, so that's our number there. So then this becomes, we take the square root of the first term, which is x. Whatever the sign is, is plus. That 4 divided by 2 is 2. All squared is equal to 3. Minus 1 plus 4 is 3. Now we need to square root both sides. So we go, okay, x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's just make it nicer. Plus or minus the square root of 3. So therefore this becomes x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. And if they ask you to leave your answer in third form, then that's it. Ching! And this is third form. Or they might say that you need to leave your answer and they might say round off to two decimal places, in which case we need to get out of calculators. So therefore we're going to say x is equal to minus 2 plus the square root of 3 or x equals minus 2 minus the square root of 3. And just a reminder, why is this plus or minus? Because think about it this way. What is 2 times 2? 2 times 2 is 4, right? But what is minus 2 times minus 2? Well, a minus times minus is a plus, and 2 times 2 is 4. So if I give you square root 4, we don't know if it's 2 times 2 or if it's minus 2 times minus 2, and that's what we're allowing for you. We're seeing that either this is square root plus square root of 3 times square root of 3, or it's minus the square root of 3 times minus the square root of 3. So that's why we put that plus or minus there, and we have to accommodate for it in the answer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get out of calculators and see what our answers are. So I'll move this over. Okay, and we're going to clear it, and we go minus 2 plus the square root of 3 equals, that does not help at all, minus 0.2, and they've said two decimal places, so you look at the third decimal and you see that's a 7, so you round that up, so it becomes minus 0.27, that equals minus 0.27, okay, or Let's look at, if I go minus, no, no, let's clear it, minus 2 minus the square root of 3, oh, sorry, I don't know what's going on here, 3 equals, that doesn't help at all, so it becomes minus 3.73, so it equals minus 3 comma 73, so there are, those are our possible answers for this. Okay, let's do another one. So x squared minus 10x minus 2. So again, we need to complete the square. And the first thing we do is look for the coefficient of this, which is 1. So we don't have to divide this by anything, right? Next, we get everything that's not 
a number and we put it, I mean not an x, and we put it onto the side. So we've got x squared plus 10x is equal to 2, right? Then we need to complete the square. So what do we do? We go x squared plus 10x plus, we halve this number and we square it. So it goes 10 over 2 all squared is equal to, what you do the one side, you do the other, so it comes 2 plus 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. Now I know some of you are writing, well, if I'm halving and squaring it, why don't I just write 25 over here as well? You can, there's nothing wrong with it. But what we have to do next is we need to take the square root of this term, which is x. We take the sine of that, which is plus. So it's so much easier if I've already got this in this form, instead of into 25, to think, that, well, the square root, well, this is just 10 divided by 2, which is 5. All squared is equal to 27. It's up to you. If you guys want to write 25, that's fine too. It doesn't make a difference to me. So now what we need to do is square root both sides. So it becomes x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 27. So then it becomes x is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 27. And again, if they ask you to leave your answer in third form, you're done. Okay, but if they ask for two decimal places, you have to, or one decimal place or whatever, then you have to say x equals minus 5 plus the square root of 27, or x equals minus 5 minus the square root of 27. And I'm going to do this once more just so you guys can make sure you understand how to do it. So let's go here and we clear it and we go minus 5 plus the square root of 27 equals, and it gives me this very intellectual answer, which helps me not, not at all. So it becomes, and we're going to round off to two decimal places, and that's interesting there because this becomes 0, 0,196. We look at the 6, and the 6 rounds the 9 up, so this actually becomes 0, 0,2. So this answer here is 0, 0,2, or let's do this one. I'm going to take this across on this side. So we've got minus 5 minus the square root of 27 equals, and again, use this answer. And again, we've got this interesting 9 and 6, which is going to make the 9 round up, so it becomes a 2. So it's minus 10.2x equals minus 10,2. Okay. Oh, okay. Now we do this one. We've got 2, 6x plus x squared equals minus 4. So asking us to complete, you to factorize this by completing the square. Every single one of these questions, the actual question was, can you factorize this com by completing the square? So in order to complete the square, we have to get it into the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. We have to get it into the quadratic formula form. So quadratic equation form. So what we need to do now is we actually need to do one of two things. You could either multiply this out or you could realize that if you divide both sides of this by 2, then what would happen is we'd have skipped a step but we'd have got more or less in this form. So if we do that, do you realize we've got 6x plus x squared is equal to minus 2. So then do you see that we've kind of got, we've got an ax squared, we've got a bx, and we've got a c, and we don't actually have to rewrite it like that because what's happened is we've skipped a step and then we've already put the number on the side, okay, which is not a bad thing. We need to rearrange these, so this becomes x squared plus 6x equals minus 2. And now we can carry on. The coefficient of x squared is 1, so we don't have to worry about dividing. So what we need to do now is complete the square on the left-hand side. So it becomes x squared plus 6x plus 6 over 2 all squared equals minus 2 plus 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So that becomes square root of the first term. That sign, square root of this, which is going to be 3, all squared, minus nine, two, sorry, 9 minus 2 is 7. 
Therefore, you've got x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Therefore, x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. Okay, so I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to show you how to do it in the calculator. It seems a bit silly. Um, so, this is how what it would look like with a third answer. I'll do the next one on the calculator just to make sure you guys do understand it. Right, so now let's look at this one. This, you've got t squared plus 30 is equal to 2 times 10 minus 80. Okay, so do you agree we definitely have to multiply this thing out in order for it to look like a trinomial? So let's do that. It becomes t squared plus 30. 2 times 10 is 20 minus 2 times 8 is 16 t. So let's now get all the t's onto the side and all the numbers onto the other side. So we get t squared. When we take the minus across, it becomes a plus. 16 t is equal to 20. When you take the number across, it becomes a minus 30. So you've got t squared plus 16 t is equal to minus 10. So there we go, we've got a t squared, we've got a t and we've got a number, and we've already put the number onto the other side. There is a coefficient of 1, so we don't need to divide by that. So the next step we're going to do is by completing the square, we're going to complete the square. So it becomes square root, oh sorry, no, sorry, complete the square. t squared plus 16t plus half of this and square it, so it becomes 16 over 2 all squared is equal to minus 10 plus plus 16 divided by 2 is 8 and 8 squared is 64. Okay. So then we go, square root of t squared is t, this sign is a plus, the square root of this, I mean this is just 16 divided by 2 is 8, all squared is equal to 54, right? Therefore we can say t plus 8 is equal to plus minus the square root of 54, Therefore, we can say t is equal to minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 54. And to make sure you guys know how to do this, I'm just going to once more do this on the calculator just to make sure. Okay, so let's get it out. Okay, so let's say we're rounding off to two decimal places. So I'm going to do, and actually I should have rewritten this. So this becomes t is equal to minus 8 plus the square root of 54 or t is equal to minus 8 minus the square root of 54. Okay, now I need my calculator. So, it becomes minus 8 plus the square root of 54 equals minus 0, 0,651. And you always look at this third term, and that's a 1. So that is less than 5. So it's minus 0, 0,65. You just run down. Is that equal to minus 0, 0,65? Or, let's get a calculator out again. Okay, this becomes minus 8 minus the square root of 54 equals minus 15.348. So we look at this 8 and we see that 8 is bigger than 5, so it rounds that number up, so it becomes minus 15.35. So it becomes minus 15, comma, 35. There we go. Right, now we've got our first one where there's actually a number in front of the x squared. There is a coefficient. So now what we need to do is remember what we were supposed to do. We don't like coefficients here. So what do we do if we don't like coefficients? We need to divide every one of these by the coefficient of x squared to get rid of it. So this becomes x squared plus 2x minus 2 over 3. 
Okay, now what do we do? Now we just carry on the same steps. What we have to do is take this across to the side so it becomes x squared plus 2x equals 2 over 3. Then we need to complete the square. So we're going to go x squared plus 2x plus we halve this and square it. 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 1 squared is 1 so I'm just writing it there. I'm cheating. But then this becomes 2 over 3 and what you have to do is the one side you have to do the other so we're plusing 1. Okay. Square root of this is x. Square root of that, well you just bring this sign down. The square root of 1 is 1. All squared is equal to. Okay, so we have a common denominator of 3. 3 goes into 3 once, remember to times by 2 plus, this is actually over 1, right? It's 1 divided by 1. 1 divided into 3 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So that actually is 5 over 3. So if we've got x plus 1 squared is equal to 5 over 3. Yes, I took an extra step now. So if I write over here, do you see I've got x plus 1 all, okay, is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. So therefore we've got x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. Therefore we can say that x is equal to minus 1 plus the square root of 5 over 3 or minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 3. So let us now write this, do this in our calculator and see what we get. So we get minus 1 plus the square root of a fraction, and that's 5 over 3, and then we get out of it, equals, that's ridiculous, so that's 0, 29. And we look here, that's a 0, so that's nice. It's 0, 29. So that's just 0, 29. Or if we do it again, we've got minus 1 minus square root of a fraction 5 over 3 equals and then that doesn't help me either. So it becomes minus 2 comma 2 9. Minus 2 comma 2 9. Now grade 11s, I do know that some of you don't have fancy calculators that have got this little fraction button. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you one example of how you would do this if you had a calculator without the fraction button. Okay, so what you need to do is realize you can go 5 divided by 3 equals, and you go square root of the answer equals. So now that is that over there, right? And then you can subtract 1 and then you go SD and you get 0, 29. So you do the thing in the bracket first, I mean the square root first, then you square root it and then you mess with the rest of it, okay? So that's how you do it if you don't have a fraction button. Most calculators have got a fraction button, it just doesn't look like this. But if you don't know how to use it or you're a bit nervous, then go do it the slow way. There's nothing wrong with doing it the slow way. Okay. Now we're going to derive the quadratic formula using this, okay? So the first thing we need to do is divide everything by A to get rid of it, right? So we divide this by an A, this by A, and this by A. So these cancel. And you're left with x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals 0. Now, what do we need to do? We need to take everything that is not an x and take it to the other side. So you're left with x squared plus b over ax equals minus c over a. Now what do we do? We need to halve this and square it. So it becomes x squared plus b over ax plus, plus b over 2a all squared, which is equal to minus c over a plus b squared, 2 squared is 4a squared. There we go, that's much prettier. 
So now what do we do? Okay, so now we take the square root of the first term, it's x. This, which is a plus, the square root of this, which is b over 2a squared, is equal to, now we need to do a common denominator here. So this becomes 4a squared. Okay, a goes into 4a squared and leaves you with 4a, so it becomes minus 4ac plus b squared, okay? So then this becomes x plus b over 2a all squared is equal to b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Square root this, so it becomes x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared, okay? If you know the quadratic formula, you can start seeing that it's starting to come through because there's that b squared minus 4ac, which we're used to seeing, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for this x. We're going to go x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. But do you see that this is a perfect square? 4a squared is a perfect square of 2a. So I can actually write this as minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And then this is still over 2a, but now this is also over 2a, right? Because now I'm taking the square root only over the top bit. So therefore, you can see that 2a is the common denominator, so it becomes minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And ta-da! That is your quadratic formula, which you find on your formula sheet. And that's how you prove it. Okay, so you guys need to make sure you understand how to do that because sometimes they can ask you to do it. It's quite mean and nasty of them to do it, but they can. So please make sure you know how to do it. Okay, and now I know it's really easy, but we're going to do a couple of examples of actually applying the quadratic formula because you'll be amazed how many of my students, even my grade 12s, struggle to get this right, okay, when they substitute their numbers into the quadratic formula to get the formula out. So let's do a couple of examples. Okay, so first of all, let's just write the quadratic formula for years that helps us. So we're going to go x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay? Right, so then remember that the coefficient of x squared is a, the coefficient of x, the whole of it, including the minus, five, minus bit, is b, and the whole of this is c, right? So we're going to substitute that into this here. So we go x is equal to minus minus 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 5 all squared, minus 4 times the first term here, which is 2, times by the last term, which is minus 8, all over 2 times by 2. Now, here's a little hint. Grade 12s, I mean grade 11s, if they tell you to solve the trinomial and they've got your um, round off, Two, two decimal places or one decimal place or something. If they ask you to solve a trinomial or quadratic and they're telling you how to round off, chances are very high that you're going to need the quadratic formula, okay? So if you see us, them running off, asking you to round off to a specific number, you will definitely need the quadratic formula. Right, so a minus times a minus is a plus, so it becomes 5 plus or minus the square root of minus 5 squared is 25, minus times a minus is a plus, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 8 is 64, all over 4, which becomes 5 plus or minus the square root of, okay, let's think about this, 4 and 5 is 9, and 2 and 6 is 8, all over 4. So now we need to find two answers. We need to find for x is equal to 5 plus the square root of 89 or for x is 
equal to 5 minus the square root of 89 over 4. So let's get out our calculators and do that. So fraction 5 plus the square root of 89 all divided by 4 equals that's no use to me, so let's press the AC button. 3.6, now we've, they've asked us to run off to two decimal places, so we always look at the third number, and that's an eight, which means it's bigger than five, so we're gonna round this up, so it becomes three comma six, one. Three comma six, one. Or, we're now gonna do the minus. So we did exactly the same thing, we're gonna do minus here. Now some of you guys are very clever with your calculators, and you can go back up and do a minus. I'm not so sure how to do it on this HP, so I'm going to start again. So I'm going to go fraction. I'll learn, don't worry, I'll find out how to do it. Minus the square root of 89, all divided by 4, e equals, useless to me, this becomes minus 1, 108. Again, this 8 means it's going to round this up. So it's minus 1, 11. That's minus... 1 comma 1 1 and there you go there are my two solutions for this right now let's try this one yeah so it's 3x squared minus x minus 4 and again I'm using the quadratic formula I'm going to change colors so you can actually just follow this a bit easier so again this thing here is a this is minus 1 and that is b and this here is c now, again, I'm going to say to you that I'm writing this out slowly and you guys might think I'm being crazy, but the number of students I find who actually do this huge long sum to get to this final form of 3x squared minus x minus 4, okay, it's part of a huge thing that they have to do and they finally get it out and then they just don't know how to substitute into the formula because they don't realize that this means minus 1, for example, and then they lose so many marks just for that and that's so silly and if you doing um, physical science, you will also be needing this in your equations of motion type section. So that's another reason why you really want to know how to do this. Okay, so we know that x is going to equal minus b, so it's going to be minus minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 1 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c which is minus 4 all over 2 times a which is 6 so minus times the minus is a plus it's just 1 plus or minus minus 1 squared is 1 minus times the minus is a plus 4 times 3 is 12 times 4 is 48 all over 6 6. Okay, right. So now, how did I get the 6? It was 2a and 2 times 3 is 6. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 6. But this is quite a nice easy one because what is the square root of 49? The square root of 49 is 7. So this becomes 1 plus or minus 7 all over 6. So therefore it is 1 plus 7 over 6, or 1 minus 7 hmm, over 6. 1 plus 7 is 8, so therefore the answer is either 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3, or 1 minus 7 is minus 6. Minus 6 over 6 is minus 1. So those are my two possible answers here. Yeah, x equal to 4 over 3, or minus one. Okay, not too bad. Let's try a little bit more difficult questions. They want us to solve this using the quadratic formula. So obviously we need to get this into the quadratic equation state first. So what are we going to do? We need to multiply this out. So we go 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times minus 3 is minus 15x is equal to 2. So then because it becomes 5x squared minus 15x minus 2 equals 0. So if we have to list this, a is equal to 5, b is equal to minus 15, 
and c is equal to minus 2. And guys, if you struggle with this, do a substitution into the quadratic formula, and I'm not being funny, I know it sounds ridiculous, and guys, you'll say, oh no, I don't struggle, this is just substitution. You'll be amazed how many of you don't realize that you're making silly mistakes until you actually go and analyze your questions, and then go look and see and see, oh, I put a minus instead of a plus, and I keep doing it, okay? So go look, okay? Right, so the formula is, I'm going to write it over here at the top, x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Right, so now let's substitute in. So x is equal to minus b, so it's going to be minus minus 15 plus or minus the square root of, oh sorry, so what I was saying was that if you find yourself struggling, write it down like this, it's actually a very good way to go, so that you can make sure you don't make silly mistakes. B is going to be minus 15, so it's minus 15 all squared, okay, minus 4 times by A, which is 5, times by C, which is minus 2, all over 2 times by a, which is 5. So do you agree that it becomes minus and minus is a plus, so it becomes 15 plus or minus the square root of, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this like this because what I'm going to show you how to do is put this in your calculator exactly like this, so that, it's a 15, over 2 times 5, I'm just going to write 10. Okay, so you guys can practice it so that you can actually see how you can actually do this all in one fill sweep. So let's get out our calculator and we're going to clear it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a fraction. Now obviously we're doing 15 plus the square root over 10 and then the next one we'll do is 15 minus the square root of this over 10. So we're going to go 15 plus square root bracket minus 15, close bracket, oopsie, not that one, delete, squared, minus 4, bracket, 5, close bracket, open bracket, minus 2, close bracket, go down, and then that's a 10, and we go across, and you go equals. Okay, so it's 15 plus the square root of 265 over 10, which is going to be 3 comma, remember we're rounding off to two decimal places, 7 is bigger than 5, so it's 3 comma, 1, 3. So it's 3 comma, 1, 3. Or, and yes, you could have, when you go back to the calculator, have realized that you can go back and just change this to minus, but just to make sure that you know what you're doing, I'm going to show you once more, okay? So, let's clear again. So, we do fraction, and we go 15 minus, okay, minus, the square root of, and we go bracket, minus 15, close bracket, squared, minus 4, Hmm. Minus 4, open bracket, 5, minus 2, close bracket, all over 10, move it all the way to the end and go equals. So you can see that now it's minus 15 minus the square root of 265 over 10, which we were expecting for the simple reason that we were going 15 plus the square root and 15 minus. That doesn't help because we need to put our answer in two decimal places. So we go SD and then it's minus 0, 0,12788, whatever. We are rounding off to two decimal places. So then we look at the third, which is 7. So this becomes minus 0, 0,13 or X equals minus 0, 0,13. There we go. Right, let's do this last one before the end of the lesson. Okay, let's just change color. So again, we have to multiply it out. So let's get it into the quadratic equation form. So it becomes 3x squared is equal to 2x plus 4. So it becomes 3x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. So therefore a is 3, b is minus 2, and c is minus 4. So if we have to substitute this in, do you agree we'd get x 
is equal to minus b, which in this case is minus minus 2, plus or minus the square root of minus, I mean b squared, so it's going to be minus 2 squared minus 4, first term is a, which is 3, times by c, which is minus 4, all over 2 times by 3, which is 6. So this becomes minus times minus is 4, plus minus square root of 2 squared is 4, minus times minus is plus, 4 times 3 is 12, times by 4 is 48, all over 6. Therefore, this is 4 plus or minus the square root of 52 over 6. So now we need to put that in our calculator. So we go. Clear. And we can go, instead of doing a fraction, we could just go this. So we go 4 plus square root of 52 equals divided by 6 equals, and then we go SD, and it's 1.87, so it's 1,87, or we can go 4 minus the square root of 52 equals, and then divide it by 6 equals, and then press SD button, and it's minus 0, 0,54, so it's minus Nord, comma, five, four. And there you go. Right, grade 11s, I'm going to stop there. I think that we've done quite a lot using the quadratic formula and solving it. I really would like you to take this opportunity to go and practice completing the square and using the concept of completing the square to design or to if develop the quadratic formula equation because they'd like to ask that and then just make sure you guys know how to substitute in. Okay, we'll carry on with similar type questions and move on to other forms of factorization in the next lesson. Hope you have a wonderful day.